You will bear children for them. Well now, the season finale of The Handmaid's Tale just aired last week, but did you happen to know it was a book before it made it to the small screen? This sort of got us thinking about what a big year it's been for book adaptations. So joining me now to talk about this is book critic Gwen Reyes, and we're doing an interesting segment. I'm so excited for this one on book to show adaptations, and we're going to start off with The Handmaid's Tale. Now, Gwen, this is a really popular TV yes. series. And I don't think a lot of people even realize it was a book to begin with. I, you know, it's funny because it's almost a 40-year-old book. It wow. came out in the early 80s. Um, and it is, his, it's a, a big feminist manifesto. Mm -hmm. It's very, very popular. It's read in schools. And it's finally being adapted for another TV show before it had been a movie. This is its first television adaptation. Interesting that we're talking about a different time period. Mm -hmm. And it's so popular it now. It is so popular now. Do you think maybe people are just interested in a land or a, an, an era just so different from what we're dealing with now? You know, it's funny because they actually went ahead and modernized the show, Did which they? I thought was really great because I was worried they were going to keep it in the 80s mm -hmm. or keep it kind of like a, a version of the future in the 80s, mm -hmm. but it's a very close future. It almost feels too realistic, which is, I think, really? one of the things that a lot of people found very oh. uncomfortable about it. Speaking of discomfort, this mm -hmm. next one we're talking about, 13 Reasons Why. Oh. This is a very current topic. Yes. Talks about bullying, and this gripped a lot of people. I myself watched it pretty much Right. In two days. I was going to say you were the one that like really inspired me oh, to watch it because I hadn't even. I, I read the book and I thought the book was really moving and, and good for a uh, young adult series, mm -hmm. but the show has just blown away and taken Netflix by storm. It's one of their most popular shows, and surprisingly, it's been picked up for a second season. Which I know that a lot of people who watched it were like, "How can you do this?" Because you've got this story about a girl who kills herself and leaves thirteen tapes, thirteen tapes behind, right. basically claiming that each person, the subject of these tapes, is the reason why she killed herself. I mean, it was just, it was really a powerful uh, series. So, the next one I want to talk about, a lot of people love mm -hmm. Game of Thrones. Oh. It's been out there for forever. Interesting to me, though, that that book, the Game of Thrones books, are so they're thick. So thick. They're I don't even understand how they would have worked with so many characters, so many different, you know, interwoven plot lines, yeah. but it works for the TV. It works much better for TV than I think, think it so? ever could yeah. have worked for a movie, because it gives them a little bit more time. Um, and HBO puts out 10 episodes every season, except for now, we're getting near the end of it, so they're doing eight and six, I think, something like that. Um, and it's it's unfortunate because I don't want to see these characters end. These are some of my fa my best friends that I've kind of <laughs> seen start You've for the last a six. Lot of time I have in these characters, a lot of time. right? I did not invest that much time with the books, but I definitely <laughs> invested all of my time with the show. He has a way of doing it's that. True. So thank you for enlightening us, of letting course. us know a little bit of the history behind mm -hmm. these blockbusters now, really. So thank you, Gwen. Thank you, Alicia. Coming